The poultry industry, meanwhile, continues to rebound from highly pathogenic avian influenza. That virus is responsible for more than 48 million bird deaths, with detections in 21 states dating back to December 2014. But bird owners have had a reprieve this summer, as there have been zero detections of avian influenza since June 17th. The USDA, however, has been planning for its return this fall and winter. Lingering effects from avian influenza, or AI, are still being reflected in the grocery store. The price of eggs hit a record in September, reaching nearly $2.97 per dozen. That cost was up almost a dollar since September 2014. We talked with Nebraska Extension Poultry Specialist Sheila Purdom on East Campus earlier this week to learn about the latest on avian influenza in the U.S. Well, there haven't been any breaks here in the U.S. in the Midwest since June of um, 2015, obviously. So we're really hopeful that we'll be clear of AI for the fall, hopefully even into 2016. How severe has avian influenza been to U.S. producers since its inception last year? Well, the USDA has statistics that this has been the number one loss in the history of the U.S. due to a foreign animal disease. Why is it such a long stretch with no cases? Well, the heat. The heat of the summer helps kill the virus. That's been our ally. Is there a threat now going into cooler temperatures that this will reemerge? Absolutely. We expect that the waterfowl wildlife could still be harboring the virus and continue to pass it on to our domestic chickens this fall. What should producers be doing, either large or small, to ensure that their biosecurity is up to snuff? Oh, man, don't let anybody who does it need to be in your chicken house, in your chicken house, to keep all possible vectors out. And that includes people, transportation vehicles, um, suppliers, all types of visitors. What signs do you look for that there are problems? Okay. The key thing is mortality. If you see 10% of mortality in your flock, you need to send in a sample for testing. The large producer probably knows to call the vet, but for smaller, maybe backyard operations, yes. what do they do if they find problems? If they have a problem, they need to isolate that bird and bring it into our diagnostic lab here on East Campus. Now, there are some new vaccine options available. Describe what those are. Okay, well, there's been vaccine developed. The USDA hasn't released it, but they're stockpiling production and we're very hopeful if there's a bad break again, it will be released. Let's talk about the supply of poultry and eggs. Eggs specifically reached record levels in September. Yes. Tell me why that market could be so fluid over the next year or two. Well, there's a lot of unknowns. Um, we're trying to get replacement pullets grown as quickly as possible, and export markets are changing constantly. We're not exporting as many eggs, so it could be as early as mid-2016. We'll get the production back up to where we were before. What can hunters do during the season that might be able to help keep an eye out for avian oh, influenza? Gosh. If you're out hunting, definitely be careful that you don't track manure into the local farm store or your feed co-op. We don't need egg producers crossing over with traffic from hunters. Is there anything they can do if they see birds that don't look right or birds that aren't alive anymore? Well, some states are going to have testing for birds as they're coming in, as hunters are going out and getting ducks and geese. We're on UNL's East Campus where you're doing something that people might be noticing in the background. It's really hot in here. Tell me why. Yes. Um, temperatures at 90 degrees for 48 hours help kill the virus. And so as a precaution in our facilities, we're heating up these rooms to 90 degrees every week. How do the sure chickens react? It. They have to get in more air to cool their bodies. You'll see that they are breathing rather heavily through their beaks. As Sheila mentioned, if you suspect a bird may have avian influenza, you can send it to UNL's Veterinary Diagnostic Center for testing. We'll link to more information on how to do so on the Market Journal website.